again. Today we have a trio of lovely women gracing our presence. All performers, they are Rita McKenzie, star of the High Octane musical, Call Me Ethel, actress Karen Sharp, and actress-singer Catherine Kramer, the latter two having a special affinity for the movies of Stanley Kramer. And now, here's your man of the half hour, Skippy Lowe. How are you? I saw you at the Roosevelt Hotel. Yes. God, you were so good. Oh, thank you. A bundle of joy and delightful <laughs> moving, doing th that routine you did. It was written specially just for you, that whole show called Colors of... Myself. Uh, yes. Nice. It was written by Earl Brown, who, you We're know, he's incomparable. He's just great. Uh -huh. And I was so thrilled to be able to work with him because I've admired his work for so long. Uh -huh. And Carl Jablonski was the director, right. and Tom Schell was the musical director. Great, Tom Schell. I love so, him. He's wonderful. Yeah, he's great. He's fabulous. But you were so good. You had <laughs> such a crowd there that evening. Yes, Sally well, actually, Kirkland introduced yes. you, brought you up. Yes, Sally Kirkland is fabulous, and, and she's great. And how, did she see, how did she see you? Actually, I just met her um, at a party uh -huh. a few days before, and, and the whole thing kind of got together. I asked her if she'd introduce me, right. and she said she would, so it was terrific, because I admired her in Anna. I thought, I think she's just a great actress. <laughs> and um, so everything worked out really, really well, and she was so generous. She even came back Saturday night. Uh -huh and um, introduced me again. again. So it was kind of, it was funny because it was like bookended. She would open uh -huh. the show and then we closed it with a bang because she came back. Uh -huh. And it was, it was just jammed every single night. But I'd say Saturday was, was like the opening in the sense that it was just, uh -huh. it was just a very exciting thing. It was a good evening. You had Sidney Poitier there sitting yes, with your dad. Sydney Poitier, yes. And who else was there? Oh goodness, there were so many. Um, Ross Hunter and uh -huh. Jock Mapes and Sidney Gilleroff. Uh -huh. Um, Susan Strasberg was there, uh -huh. and um, let's see. You had a good crowd. Yes, it was terrific. Really star-studded and very exciting. Were you nervous? No, I was just really excited. I don't know. There, of course, you get a little nervous for an opening, you know, mm -hmm. when it's kicking something off. But I just, I really loved the show so much uh -huh. and loved performing so much that actually I felt really terrific. May I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. What made you wear the wig? <laughs> because okay. that just threw me off when you <laughs> threw it out and that beautiful <laughs> hair came out. I think it's a combination of different things. Um, the show being called The Colors of Myself uh -huh. was originally a one-woman show with, um, actually was staged um, for a theater where I had acting in it too because I'm also an actress. Uh -huh. So that, you know, we had like, it was like a concert. Uh -huh. But the wig idea came, I think, mainly because I've always loved Louise Brooks and Clara Bow and the, the It Girl, you know, the people of the 20s. I think Louise Brooks though especially because she had so much style and I've always really been fascinated with that with uh -huh. that hairdo and I've always wanted to cut my hair that way uh -huh. so I decided to show different colors uh -huh. of myself uh -huh. that that would be a really interesting thing mm -hmm. you know being a one woman show you yes. always want to surprise the audience and so that Victor Victoria fit yeah, <laughs> you threw me off guard, guard here <laughs> that red hair you remind me of Susan Hayward oh my goodness oh you were so beautiful oh, and I okay. said to my I was with Susan that night and I said god does she look like Susan Hayward <laughs> what a lo I loved your songs. I thought you were oh, great. Thank you. Broadway. Why California? Yes. Why don't you go to Cal New York? That's where it's at. I, I would love to go to New York. I'm going to be going to the Algonquin um, in, in the summer to, to do the show, so I feel great about that. Um, actually, I was born here, and then I moved away for a while. Uh -huh. But New York, and I think in, in this business, um, it's important to kind of be bi-coastal because there's work in both yes, places. Yes, I agree. But I don't think there's any real particular reason why I'm here as opposed to New York. I just, I hope to get to you're New Broadway. York. You're Broadway. You're Broadway. Yeah. You're totally Broadway. You're not, you're not even in cabaret. You're real Broadway. Yeah, I, I, it's true. I'm more of a theatrical performer than a cabaret performer. Uh -huh. You're very young. You're 19? Yeah, I just turned 20, actually. Uh -huh. um, about, so I was 19 as of the time I did the show the first time, and then I turned 20 uh -huh. on the 4th of April, excuse uh -huh. me, and I opened on the 12th, so uh -huh. I just turned 20 uh -huh. um, about a week before. Uh-huh. Your mother and dad were in the audience, yes. and boy, I, I mean, your folks must be very proud of you. <laughs> Look at your lovely mother sitting next to you. <laughs> Hello, Ms. Kramer. How are you? Very proud of her. Hello. It is Karen it's Sharp. It's Karen Sharp. High yeah. and Mighty. Oh, what that a That wonderful you movie. <laughs> what a, you've done a lot of great movies. Well, you? yes, I did some movies, and I did a lot of television. Uh-huh. My God, you must have been proud oh, of her. Oh, I daughter. am. I'm very proud of her. I've been watching her perform for a long, long time. But I don't sit. I stand. You stand. <laughs> I can't sit. <laughs> Ms. Kramer. I pace in the back. Ms. Kramer, where do you come from originally? You, uh, San Antonio, Texas. You came to Hollywood as an actress? As a young girl, a young wanting to be Just an like actress. Uh-huh. Yes. 
And uh, in those days, it was a little luckier uh -huh. because... Um, luckier, I like that word. It was luckier. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, I'll tell you why. Because I'm watching Catherine go through some of the things that I went through. Yes. Trying to get a foothold, trying to get a start, trying to get people yeah. to come and look at your work. Yes. In those days, you could go into an agent's office. Mm -hmm. You could make an appointment. If you didn't have one, you could sit and wait, and they would see you. And if they thought maybe you had something, they would send you out. Mm. And I was very lucky because I got the first job I ever went on. Uh -huh. And I, I never stopped working. Were there 19-year-old casting agents there, though? though? 19 year No. <laughs> no, no, we have no, 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 no. casting very agents. Young people. I mean, young am I right? I mean, oh, yeah. Sometimes I go in and I think they must be, you know, just a little older than me. Yeah. Isn't that, yeah. Yes, isn't that scary? It's scary. And then if I would try to do this again, they'd say, Karen, who? You know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> say, oh, exactly. My. You feel like you didn't accomplish anything. Mm. But, you know, in the days, in those wonderful days uh -huh. when I started, the studio contracts, they paid you a salary. Mm -hmm. They taught you they how you. to act, they how groomed. to dance, how to sing. Yeah, they groomed you. They handled your publicity, mm -hmm. taught you everything. Today, I watch this young woman here mm -hmm. who has to go over here to get this lesson, over there to get that lesson. It's very difficult. Yeah. And then you almost have to buy a property, yeah. spend money yes. of your own to be seen. In Sad. those days, there was so much little theater you could be seen in. Yeah. Sad, isn't it? It's much harder. It's almost defeating. Yeah. How you did you meet your any... husband, Miss Kramer? How did I meet my husband? I want to know. Stand you do, really? One of the greatest. Oh, he's one of the greatest. That's a story. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Good. Um, I was making a film um, at Paramount uh -huh. with Jerry Lewis mm -hmm. as his leading lady. In what was that? In The Disorderly Order. That's right. That's right. That's right. I was a brunette <laughs> <laughs> that time. And... Um, my husband was making a film called Ship of Fools oh, great on movie. the next stage. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not a set hopper. I just never believed in visiting people's uh -huh. sets. Mm -hmm. But I had a lot of free time mm -hmm. on this particular film. And my heroine, my favorite actress, yes. was Vivian Lee. And she was working uh -huh. in the and next, next movie. Next set. Yes, Div Fools. And I, and I hemmed and hawed for days about this, you know, mm -hmm. walking onto a closed set. just was not my style. Uh -huh. But I did, and there she was, you know. Uh -huh. And I s sat. I was standing there because she was on the ship. It was about a ship. Yes, I know. I know. And the story. I was in I the it. water, effectively, sort of part of the water, which was really wasn't the water. But I was standing up there looking at her, and she was uh -huh. actually working. And I didn't even think I might be in the way, you know. Yes. And this voice came booming, "Who is that?" You know. And uh -huh. I thought, "Oh my goodness, they're going to throw me off this set," uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. And I thought, "Who is that up there on that camera?" Uh -huh. And they said, that's Mr. Stanley Kramer, and, and he wants to know who you are. I said, oh, my goodness, I'm the he's going to throw me off the set. <laughs> so I, um, I went back twice, and each time I went back, that happened. Mm -hmm. So a few days later, a uh, makeup artist who I knew that was on Stanley's film said, you know, Mr. Kramer would have liked to have met you. And I said, well, why? The picture's cast, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Well, he began to call my, my manager and yes. my agent, and I wouldn't give him a date for at least a year. You didn't? No, I said, you never, I never go out with those people. You know, if they ask you out and they want to kiss you good yes, night, I'm going to say no. I I'll never work with those I people. I bet he fell in love with you the first time he seen you, because <laughs> I think you are an absolutely lovely oh, lady. Dear, thank Your you. mother is lovely, darling. Yes, you see? Yes. I bet he did but fall in love with you yeah. the very first time. Well, we were married yeah. just a few months so you later. moved, it, but then you, uh, then you were married for a while, and then you moved to Seattle mm -hmm. after. When Catherine, Catherine was born and Jennifer, I have four children. Four. I have two stepchildren that really? I raised, and my husband, I consider them mine. Uh -huh. And uh, then we had Catherine, then uh -huh. we had Jennifer. And are all in the business? Are they They're all? all <laughs> well, except for our son, who's a professor at UCLA. Oh, uh -huh. But all my girls are in the business. Uh -huh. My oldest daughter is a director, uh -huh. an actress. Who's that? Casey Which Kramer. Casey Kramer, yes. And then there's Catherine. And then I've got Jennifer warming up in the bullpen. <laughs> but she's going to university in the fall. What do you feel about your daughters being in the business? I think it's a business? wonderful profession. I didn't want, I didn't really want in the beginning yes. to raise them here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I wanted to give them a normal upbringing. Seattle. So we moved to Seattle. What made you move to Seattle, may I ask? Well, I thought it was to give them sort of a simple environment. It is a beautiful place. Beautiful. Northwest is lovely. But I didn't know. Uh -huh. 
that it had more theater. It was like uh, taking this child who like wanted to be an actress, uh -huh, uh -huh. performer, everything. Warm theater, lots of theater. And I thought I was taking her out of this uh -huh. environment, and I put her right smack in the middle uh -huh. of the greatest theater in the country next to New York, and yeah. all the uh -huh. big bands and all the orchestra, everything was right there, and so mm -hmm. she just went to work. What made you so fall in love with the big band music? Oh, well, that's interesting. God. Um, Actually, as a, as a kid growing up, and I'm talking like the age of four, five, and six, uh -huh. I would never ask for like nursery rhymes or anything, or, well, I liked Winnie the Pooh for a while, <laughs> I guess, but it was Broadway musicals and Judy Garland yes. and Frank Sinatra and people like this. So I think when I went up there, I was always very much um, interested in theater music and the music of the really uh -huh. great vocalists, like Peggy Lee and people like this, yes. Ella Fitzgerald and Barbara Streisand, yes. or just people that really were vocal as opposed to just you know, rock, which I think, you know, I'm really into contemporary music too, uh -huh. but I think my roots are with theater and uh -huh. with um, conservative pop, I guess you'd call uh -huh. it. So when I went up there and I met, they had really great big bands, like people from Count Basie and Harry James and, yes. you know, all the musicians who had worked with the really great big bands, a lot of them were up there. Mm -hmm. And so I became, like, I started singing as a featured vocalist mm -hmm. at the age of 11, 12, and also was a big band singer, probably one of the youngest, the youngest ones, uh, you know, uh, in the country. And that uh -huh. wasn't even really uh -huh. popular then, like uh -huh. the late 70s or, you know, as it is now. Mm -hmm. So I think the musicians um, really instilled in me a love uh -huh. of big band music. Mm -hmm. And for me, the very first time I ever heard, like, In the Mood or, or any of those songs, it felt really natural. Uh -huh. And I just, still now, even when I just hear a big band playing on the radio or something, I just feel really at home so it's I just always have loved that kind of music uh -huh. and um, I think you know a lot most everybody does it, it's still so popular now uh -huh. and real research I love which she said I love which uh, some people are born in the trunk but she said yeah. she was born in the kitchen <laughs> <laughs> that. because well, you worked yeah. the clubs and hotels <laughs> yeah. and she was too young go stage. ahead to explain she to me. was too young to be on stage uh -huh. because they were serving liquor right in, in the hotels. yes in the hotels so they used to stash Catherine in the kitchen uh-huh and she'd do her homework I used to know. do that too <laughs> I used to, yes really? I started as a kid too <laughs> yes, yes up in the Catskills and the so she's got yes. a real she's uh -huh. got a real feeling about what yeah. the best kitchens in oh, that's Seattle are I think it's great Four Seasons is the best oh what about the hotel yeah you know, there's a lady right now in town doing, uh, breaking all records at the Pasadena. Yes. Is it the Pasadena? Yeah, Pasadena Playhouse. Playhouse. Right. And Rita McKenzie, you are just yes. killing them, doing a one-woman show. I'm, I'm mesmerized by these two women. Oh, right. Right. Are you ready? Right? Right? And we're oh, to meet you, I, so. No, no. This Ma is Rita McKenzie, I must tell you, you are uh, doing ethical. I saw you at the Roosevelt. Oh, you did. I did. Oh, I certainly yes. did. I came in one yeah, night, and you were on stage, and I thought, Ethel's back. Oh, my With that goodness. voice. It's Incredible. It is amazing. I'm amazed. Why are you amazed? I've always had this voice. That's you always had it? You yeah. always, always. New Jersey? Yeah. yeah. Grew up? Yes, I did, and my family all sounds like this, too, so it's, it's nothing, uh, <laughs> it's nothing <laughs> new. When did you discover to put this back <coughs> together, Eth Ethel? Uh, uh, at uh, uh, at Ethel? late 80, 87, we decided to okay. do this. Uh, we felt the time was right, and... Um, People had always told me I sounded like her, so I uh, just felt that maybe we would do some material uh -huh. in my one-woman show, which is what we were going to do. And as we researched and found out so much more, you know, material, and actually researched the woman and found out she was an interesting woman, and uh, qu she quite really a lot was. my type of gal, you know, I, I, I identified with a lot of her feelings on subjects and so forth, and we just, uh, it evolved is what happened. Uh -huh. And we took it, uh, we were discussing just before how it's so difficult to, uh, to write a show and to, to put it up. Uh -huh. You need to take it and put it in cabaret and have them look at it there, and then it moves along in its natural you right. know, uh, evolution. And this is what we did with the show. We opened it in cabaret. Uh -huh. and, in um, New York? In New York, and uh, critics loved it, thank God. Just little by little you did Little it. by little. That's what you do. The one woman show or one woman man. You do it little by little that's and right. built it. Exactly. Is that right? That's exactly what we, we're not risk takers. Let's no, just say right. that. Exactly. And we Go wanted ahead. to see if it was right. something people wanted to see. We missed the music of the, and this is another thing that is so wonderful because she's, oh, she's a gorgeous young woman and she loves this music. And she does. This yeah. is the music that we miss, you know, this, uh -huh. this the 40s and the 30s. And, and we were afraid in our own little way that this was not going to be carried on somehow. And right. we thought, well, maybe in our little way we can take this music. And I love singing it. Yes. And people like to hear it. So, well, we'll just do that. And uh -huh. uh, we've had a wonderful response. Have you, have you ever met Ethel? 
No, I never have. Never? Never have, no. Seen her many times, performed live. Seen her. I never saw her perform live. Never? Never. Rita? No. And I live Lindsay. You know what it's like? It's like living next to the Statue of Liberty, uh -huh. which, I, you know, in New Jersey, right across mm -hmm. the river, and you assume it's always going to be there. Me and, too. Never you know, went. Isn't never that went. terrible? Same thing. And I, yeah. I was brokenhearted when, you know, it came to the point where I was never going to see her. Gypsy, I can't believe you're sitting there and not seeing Gypsy. I was in high school then, oh. and I... <laughs> <laughs> Were you in love with her at the time? Yeah, I, I liked her. Well, I loved her. She was a brassy kind of gal, and I identified that, but I wanted to be Julie Andrews. And <laughs> I, <laughs> not with a voice like that. No, yeah. and that's the thing. I didn't know at that time. I uh -huh. thought, oh, I want to be an ingenue. I had, <laughs> what did I know? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Stupid me. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, but it just so happened that I, I just loved her. Of course, I grew up with her. She yes, was yeah. there. Well, Hard researching? Was it her? No, not at all. Wasn't no, it was, it was easy. Uh, the, the actual research took place about six months, and, yes. and of course, all of that was work, you uh -huh. know. But then once we read, we had such a ball reading all the uh -huh. things about her uh -huh. that um, what we did was we took what we knew about Ethel and we, in, we inserted some of our own thoughts throughout the show. And this is the way the show is. It's, it's, yeah. it's Ethel, but it's us also. It's our thoughts, contemporary thoughts, what Ethel would have thought in certain situations. Did you find that. out if she was a happy lady? Happy lady? Yeah. Yes, I think uh, she was happy because the thing about Ethel was that the next thing or the thing she was doing then was the best thing she ever did. Yes, yes, yes. And I love that because yes. that's how you keep young. Yes, yes. And I just thought, oh, that's yes. great. Well, I wish I could do that. Miss Kramer, did good. you know her? You must have seen her oh. many times. And I you did must see knew her, her but I only met her once. My husband made a film with her. Yes. Oh. It's a mad, 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 mad world. Yes. We were talking right. about that. It's <laughs> right. a fun film. And he loved working with her. She was a she was a lovely human being. She really was. Really and I met her only once, just a year before she passed away. And I just took a chance. I didn't know her. But I couldn't stand. I was standing around. In a, in a, we were in a beauty shop. Yes. And I was paying my bill. She was paying hers. And I thought, well, do I say anything? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ignore her. I could tell you know, who she is. You know? And I was paying my bill. I thought, this is ridiculous. You know, Your husband made a film with her, and she's wonderful. Uh -huh. So I turned to her, and I said, I just want you to know that I love your work. And she was so... Oh, she was so appreciative uh -huh. of that. She is, very, that. very. And I said, I love your work, and my husband loves your work, and he made a film with you, and we talked about that. And, she, and I said, you were just wonderful, and in everything you do. Well, she was very loved by, I yes, think, she everyone she worked with. She was my she favorite was, of and Broadway all the, people on all Broadway. Of the, uh, Gypsy. Oh, absolutely. I went there opening night. Oh, Couldn't believe it. I just got back from Europe. Went there opening night, and I just, I just stood down. I ran down the aisle, and I just screamed. I was... Yes. Something made me do it. I'll just yes. do it. Oh, she's incredible. Well, she, was mm. she was Broadway. Vital but you know something, your yes. daughter, Miss yes. Kramer, I must tell you, Kath Catherine has that certain quality. I sat there. She has that certain quality. It's got to be groomed, and it's got to mm -hmm. be in New York. But it's mm -hmm. wonderful. That's what that's we need. Little bit yes, of life. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what the Broadway show is. Yes, yes. 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 Star. They're missing exactly. young yeah. stars. No stars. So cool. Individual stars. 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 We I don't. We have ensembles. <laughs> that's, that's right. I hate it. That's I hate that. You know, that's you a very important right. point. I think, I think that what it is is that a lot of times, and I love a lot of the shows of today, certainly Les Miserables, which I do in the show. It's ensembles. All ensembles. But I think that the show is the star more than the people in it. Yes, that's what I think is missing. Chorus line, all of that. Do. Yeah, I, I think in films also, but especially the in the theater. And the the, yeah, right they don't right seem to movie. they don't seem to take like Ethel Merman was the star of the you know the, the show might have been important but she was the reason they went to go see it as opposed to now it's the special effects and the you know and they, they don't wrote go those Kramer. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question. You're just a personality. It's so true. I think the young kids don't want that individual personality. You know why? They all copy. They all They're look all the alike. Person. They're all the same I person. Can't tell there is no individuality. Any of the young person right. from the next young same person. haircuts, same things. Exactly. Everything's the and same. And I don't really have. I can't really identify any of them. But no, that's no, that's that's no. That's true. And um, I think that the bigger than life idea uh -huh. yes. is maybe the secret. I, I, I don't know. Who knows what 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 makes for a certain well, spark in someone? <laughs> but but I know from Catherine. I know. And from this lovely Rita. young woman yeah, here, mm -hmm. too, Rita, yeah. I think they have those ingredients, you yes, see? Yes, they do, yes. And I they think that's do. why they're being going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I think people will pick up on that, I and think then uh -huh. things will start Hopefully to turn. Hopefully it'll change that's yes. what we're hoping. I that's hope what that I feel will. people want, and I think a lot of times people in today's world, maybe because things move so quickly and we're afraid of, of things moving too fast, they try, you know, they always say, what is it that the great stars of the past had? And I think there's a magic that they had that today seems to be, it's almost like, 
they go against the grain that way. They don't really want to. Uh -huh. It's too natural. It's too. Uh -huh. I think it's gotten to the point where it needs to go back to the way it was, and uh -huh. the people seem to really want that. Uh -huh. You know, especially now, especially in the last few years. So hopefully the 90s will uh, <laughs> ding 20 the years last. Though. What does Katherine Kramer really want? I mean, really, I know you, you're a very fine actress, wonderful performer. What are you aiming Thank you. for? What, what are you really aiming for? Broadway? I think my goals are basically to be, um, to conquer all aspects of the medium, though that mm -hmm. may seem kind of bold, Broadway, records, no. film, That's television. Terrific. But you want to do it right. <laughs> Most of the people I admire um, have been able to be successful in all mediums, you know, and Judy Garland. And Judy Garland. Is that yes, Judy Garland is like my favorite singer, and I do portions of her in the show. You know, she was successful. She didn't do Broadway though, which is interesting. <laughs> Liza, you know, Liza. What made you do? Uh, the Clark Gable thing on stage uh, at the Roosevelt. That's yeah. the color. Yeah, that's. May I ask you what? What? Made sure. You mean what made me use the, the, the that picture? particular? No, the particular song. Well, like it was one of Judy's first trademark songs. Right. Um, as you remember, Zing went the strings of my heart, which I also did. That was the first song she sang when she was uh -huh. what, twelve years old? I think she might have been a little older, but they said twelve. You yes. know, for MGM. That was the song she sang when she actually was signed, and I, you made me love you, which was already a popular Jolson song. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted you to do "Blame It on My Youth." I don't know oh, why. Oh, that well, Judy, Judy never sang that except oh, on not um, her, but something else, and that's and that's another. You know, that you know it's interesting I to say that because I love that you song. You do? Oh yes, that Michael Feinstein. for you. Yeah, Michael. I love uh, Michael. Okay, told wonderful. me that would be. I, I, you know, I knew him when he was first. Um, I met him through Liza Minnelli, uh -huh. actually, and I knew he you was You met him at the Mondrian? I knew him when he first arrived in town. Met him in Seattle. I actually I met, met him oh in yes. Seattle, oh, yes. In yeah. fact, yeah. Um, like, no, he, it's right when I, it's an interesting uh -huh. story. Yeah. When I saw him, I saw him on television on Merv Griffin, right. and I was so interesting because me being a big band singer and people saying that wasn't popular, and he's, you know, he was a lot older, so, you know, right. I saw him, I thought, my goodness, he's singing all the songs that I love, Wonderful. and he's going to bring it back in, and yes. it was so interesting seeing a unique performer who wasn't afraid to do his own no, he thing. Wasn't. You know? Not at all. And so when I met him, I asked him, um, I said, listen, I'm just, you know, mm -hmm. you're already on your way up with yes. this, but I've been singing these songs for so long and I'm only like, what, 15 or something uh -huh. like this, but do you think there's a place for this? Because everybody I speak to says, well, in New York and, and California, this just isn't going to go over. You have to uh -huh. be Madonna or you can't, right. you know, do anything. Right. Uh -huh. And he said, no, it was difficult, but he was just getting, um, Liza had just found him and decided to mentor uh -huh. him and uh -huh. and you know he's really he just went right all the way up there and, and I at think the Mondoran Hotel they threw yeah. that big thing for Rosemary Clooney yeah. tell me something business sensational I understand it's yes, you're at well. the, the it's at the balcony theater is yes it? we're there the until sun, uh, Sunday night uh -huh. and then we move to New York to the American Jewish Theater the American oh. Jewish Theater is not a hoot I love it I love it a hoot for a month in June oh and uh, so uh, that's on 28th Street uh -huh. and then we're um, there's a lot of other things coming up after that uh, m some other cities uh, I think you're great I really thank do. you think, thank are you an actress you. also oh yes you oh, are yes definitely before you were th uh, oh, you yes. did acting in New York oh definitely yes I mean you you know this is this is it's a it's one of those stories you know after you know 12, 15 uh -huh. years, uh -huh. I'm just Miss Kramer, you've got to hear her shout that. What? I got, she's coming. I want to hear one note of that mouth coming out. Yes, we have. That's when I found the article. And, and oh, yeah. doing you should see it. Yeah. Yeah. You should. We're going to, now that we've closed, she's closed. Yeah. Please, she's closed. Yeah. Please yeah. you've got to see it. We're going to come see it. She's wonderful. She really is. One screaming note of that. Come on. I want to hear it, Rita. Come on, Rita. Give her that note. Give that mouth. I got rhythm. I got music. I got my man who could ask for anything more. Uh, well, that's, 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 that's wonderful. That's, 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 that's that's wonderful. That's <laughs> How many songs that's do you do right. in that show? 25, 25 yeah. songs. 25 belters. Belter. They are belters. Yeah, they are belters. Yeah. We, uh, we take a, one or two of them. Uh, we do a couple of ballads. Now, who wrote this show, whole show? For uh, completely? Christopher Powich and Rita McKenzie. And Rita McKenzie. <laughs> okay, Rita. <laughs> yes. Um, and we, like I told you, we've we've uh, we've taken what Ethel had to give, and uh -huh. we've uh, we've added some of our own, and it's a mix. Yes. And, yeah. Karen, Karen, sure. I'm not Karen. Miss Kramer, 
Oh, you don't use Karen Sharp, Sharp anymore, do you? No, no. Karen Kramer. You had, you had a school <laughs> up in uh, <laughs> you had a school up in Seattle when you back when you went back up. Mm. I did, did because when we arrived, and then I we realized there was so much theater, and then yeah. she was going to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> they didn't use young people uh -huh. in young people's roles. Oh, yeah. That's first, true. I said, That's why? true. I said, how? I can't cry for Helen Keller if she's 25 <laughs> years uh -huh. old and uh -huh. she's playing 12. Uh -huh. So they said, well, we just, we will audition. I said, well, gosh, and I, I, I took a chance on Catherine. Uh -huh. And she kind of paved the way. I didn't know the young people's market was going to catch on when yeah. I opened up the school. It was really for Catherine because uh -huh. she needed to study. She really needed to study. So I had people from all that over the good. country. And we were only a summer school, though. We didn't, I didn't believe in interfering with education. Yes. Mm. But we went in the summer from 9 to 5, uh -huh. and five days a week. And on the sixth day, uh -huh. we, we lectured. And I had Jane Fonda come up. I had Henry really Winkler know. come uh -huh. up. I had Robert Wise. Oh, wonderful. We had, and then Stanley uh -huh. directed the show at the end oh, of it. And I each know. young person did. They all danced, and they all had to sing. If they specialized in a special thing, they did that on the show. And we had internships in the summer with all the major theaters. Lovely. Fortunate. <laughs> so it was, it oh, was a, something that, was that I was very, very proud of because oh. I think it made a contribution. Mm -hmm. Now, I stress, mm -hmm. because I think it's more important. It's more important to be a human being first mm -hmm. and then an actor second. I agree. And yeah, that was sort right. of our philosophy of the school. That's important. That's mm -hmm. wonderful mm -hmm. philosophy your mother just said. Yeah, and you live well, by I that. I was raised by that. Yeah, that's, so that's she used that as the symbol of the school. And a lot of people who have gone on to, well, all, every single one of the students in there have gone on either to Yale or they've all gone or to, college, to New York or Juilliard, <laughs> <laughs> or they've gone on to daughter. work. Lovely. <laughs> She's absolutely lovely and very talented. Really. Oh, thank you. Very, very talented. Well, they all felt that the What's school gonna, really, really gave them their basis, uh -huh. and that's what I feel, too. I mean, I've studied a little in New York, too, yeah. but really, um, the teachers that she had up there, uh -huh. most of them were from the Guthrie Theater from New York, and mm -hmm. the, the guests that, wow. just the, the, you know, it was really the inside well, of the you business. you build a school on what yeah. you, what you know you need when mm -hmm. you get out there in this profession. It isn't just academic. No, right. it's just You know, you have right. to have the academics, but yes. you have to have professionals who have done it. Mm -hmm. Because it's a different way of working. And you've got to know how much money it costs yeah. to do it, just to hang so in You've there. learned from the... The best. Oh, the best. Yes. Yeah, the best of that's the business. It, that's, Boy, that's see, terrific. These kids today are learning from kids, mm -hmm. and they'll yeah, never that's learn. That's right. Their kids are teaching kids. And, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say what you were saying and what we were discussing earlier. It's very important, I think, and this is hopefully um, what I can try. I try and, you know, tell my contemporaries this without sounding preachy. Yes. The business, they always say, why was it so great before? I think it's because there was a certain tradition, and if those people don't pass that on, mm -hmm. you know, if they don't try and learn from the True. greats and people that are, that they think they won't, you know, listen to someone who's older than they are, who's in a, an authority position. Mm -hmm.